and welcome to episode 22 of Dynamic Spoken, the weekly Guild Wars 2 podcast brought to you by Guild Mag and now hosted live by Sitting on a Couch Gaming. Uh, this is our first ever live episode. Uh, we were due to have one last week, but we did have a few last minute technical difficulties and whatnot that basically made it impossible to start on time. But we are here now, and from now on, we'll, we'll be live every Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. And if you're in Europe, that's basically 1 a.m. the Saturday morning BST. And we'll be found on twitch.tv slash Gaming. So, for those of you who are maybe watching for the first time, uh, this is basically a Guild Wars 2 PvE podcast that has been going since the first Beta Weekend event. And uh, these two lovely lads have been with me from the start, so how are you guys doing? Hello, I'm doing well. Hi everybody. Alright, so... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for those who have seen us before, uh, you may be watching the recorded version on the Guildmag YouTube account, uh, you'll notice that the lovable Ali isn't with us. Uh, she's basically, unfortunately, had to leave the podcast and many of her other sort of Guild Wars 2 commitments uh, because of some IRL things she's got going on. Uh, so yeah, we'll all miss her, uh, but hopefully she will be able to return to us one day, but it's just one of those things that we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so for now, you've just got us three entertaining you for the foreseeable future. That's not such a bad thing, Indeed. is it? Uh, well, so, debatable. <laughs> uh, this week, we are talking about the upcoming Queen's Jubilee patch, and with it being uh, Guild Wars 2's one-year anniversary on the 28th this month, uh, we're going to take this time to kind of look back at the previous year and look forward to like mo uh, what we may see in the next coming months and you know, on to like, the next year. But before all that, we will go to the news with Jason, as always. So take it away. Indeed. Arunda have, of course, announced what their next live patch is going to be. We've got the Queen's Jubilee coming August 6th, and events, com events coming along with that. We have a developer live stream previewing it on the 5th, if you want to check that out on their Twitch channel. And content-wise, there's hot air balloons that are going to be appearing all around here. Yeah, there's going to be an opening ceremony instance, the opening of the Crown Pavilion mini-map. We're going to be able to fight unique bosses in the Queen's Gauntlet mini-game, I assume. And, of course, in terms of the open world, we're going to be able to ignite beacons to support Porteria and all of that nice jazz. We're getting an account wallet for currency, so no more having random currency filling up your bank. You can put it all in one nice tidy wallet now. We're going to get a solo PvP queue for dungeons. Bonus rewards for dungeons a bit oh no, solo PvP queue for PvP. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bonus rewards for dungeons are being added. An update on champion loot as well, which they talked about previously. They're adding in a mini-game rotation system, improving the effects of sort of like the particle effects on scenes with uh, attacks. New world, uh, new world versus world ability line is being introduced, and we're getting permanent finishers. And along with that, there are new gem store items which are now available, which you can buy. They're only available for a week, so go check them out in game. It's like Cartwright did a post outlining. What, what they're changing with dungeon and champion rewards and finally we got a nice little blog post in uh, by R uh, ruby bayer giving us a little bit of insight in how guild wars 2 works on social networks that is the news grow hat oh, that was a mammoth one that <laughs> <laughs> i have died inside <laughs> very impressive <laughs> on the bbc <laughs> definitely all right uh so we will kick things off with uh the queen's jubilee discussion uh, Guildmag was actually given the fantastic chance to preview the new content and we sent along Steve to kind of see what it's all about so he's already seen it but he's going to try and keep his mouth shut for spoilers and whatnot that we can't tell you yet so <laughs> exclusive reveals tonight could be illegal <laughs> uh, but you will find it of course on the Guildmag uh, website as soon as uh, we've written it up and we can publish it and whatnot so do look out for it uh so, first thing, uh, we're getting a new area in Divinity's Reach called the Crown Pavilion. Basically, kind of a gladiator's arena. Um, in the screenshots on the release page, it looks like uh, quite a deep kind of arena with that glass roof with the bird kind of thing coming over. I think it looks uh, quite pretty. Mm, it looks a bit like an eagle, Yeah, to be honest. Um, so, like, the actual event that takes place there is basically like... a kill everything, become the champion kind of thing. Steve's looking at me as though, like, ooh. <laughs> Have I already said something that's completely Secrets. wrong? Secrets. No, no, actually what you're saying is is mostly right. Um, He's picking his the, words <laughs> the, the one thing I was 
kind of confused about before I we, we, we went into it was was the, the gladiatorial um, combat going to be like 1v1, like almost PvP style between players? Or was it going to be like you versus monsters or something? And that was one of the kind of thing I was thinking about. Like, you know, I was thinking of like, you know, it's kind of like the, I was thinking like um, gladiatorial arenas or something thing like that and it would be that sort of um you know fanfare with crowds standing around and things like that and that was kind of where my mind was going um and there's just something interesting to think about mm. Hmm. it's very uh, nice yeah um so is that gonna be like the only uh kind of event slash main thing that's going on in uh like this update like the first part of it like, is that the well, we know we have the opening ceremony. Yeah. Yeah, there's a yeah. ceremony. There's balloons. Mm. Big hot there's air balloons. balloons. One of the things I was thinking about with the balloons, was it going to be like a Vista thing? Where, like, you get on the balloon, and you, great. like, wherever the balloon decides to go, but you could, like, kind of sit in there, and it'll be, like, Vista-like, and you can look around the whole area, or maybe it'll go on a little trip. I that was kind of what I was fantasizing. I, I want to legitimately fly across the entire map of Guild Wars 2 in a hot air balloon without any loading yeah. screens and just look around. It'd be great. <laughs> around Guild Wars 2 <laughs> yeah. in 80 days. Like, <laughs> that could be the awesome. Uh, so that was kind of the thing I was thinking about with the balloons. Mm. Um, and then it's like who, like, you know, there's always the issue of like who is going to be... What are you fighting against? Because there always has to be a villain, you know. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be, you know, the pirates, or are the Ether Blades going to start becoming the main enemy of uh, Guild Wars Two? Because it seems like consistently every update, Ether Blade has been even in the um, in the, re the the current update. When you go up towards the ship, there's a, a dynamic event, and then that spawns Ether Blades, and you got to fight them, champ. So yeah. you know. Is this the new villain, so to speak? Yeah. And who is the head of this villain? So I think that's an interesting area of, of where they can go down as far as you know introducing a brand new enemy or a brand new uh, group like a Illuminati, so to speak. Yeah. Of Wars Two that you're fighting against. I love to know more about the Eighth of Blade. They're quite an interesting group, to be honest. Yeah. With what they've shown up so far. I mean, if we yeah. go, if we go down the route that like Steve's saying, are they becoming the next main villain? It's kind of their way of kind of postponing us going for the next Elder Dragon because we've been speaking about this before. A lot of people are like, when are we next going to fight you know, the next dragon? But if they're using kind of the Aether Blades to kind of sidestep us from that and go, okay, here's a villain to deal with for now, then that, that yeah. might be what they're doing. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out again over the next few months. And that's kind of what we always say with these updates. We just don't know until, you know, we... We don't know until we see, basically. Oh, we do know. Well, and yeah, we Steve. Oh, <laughs> Steve knows. As it, he, he strokes his beard with all the knowledge <laughs> that it holds. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I, I, I'm actually, I won't say anything now. Maybe I'll wait till a little bit later because we have so much to talk about. There's yeah. a lot that that's happened. A lot to cover. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, then uh, the watchwork mechanism thingy. Um, I've only briefly read over this, but. It's basically, a new, is it? It's like a new material slash currency kind of thing that can be used in uh, new crafting weapons uh, to purchase the uh, sovereign weapons. Or what's interesting, actually, I find is the uh, watchwork portal device. Um, does anyone know how this is actually going to work? Like, is it kind of just going to be like a mesmer portal for everyone kind of thing, like that everyone can use once they've like made it or built it or crafted it or whatever, or is it going to be like something completely different? I don't. I don't have an idea how. I don't even have an idea of how they're going to go about that. I mean, like, because they. I mean, like, they could make it like teleport you across the map, but we have waypoints for that. So I'm not. I'm reading on it now. So I don't know how they'll how they'll go about that. It might just be a little like nice mesmer portal thing. The way, the way I think I'm thinking of it is, it's just going to be a mesmer portal that only you can use because they use the word personal portal in it. Mm. Which kind of makes me think yeah. that they don't want to make the Mesmer portals obsolete because everyone can effectively, well, up to 20 people can use them. So it's maybe just a thing that you can use like a Mesmer portal when, whenever you want, maybe. Yeah, That's I'd love I'm to have that at World as well. Be great. <laughs> Be great. <laughs> well, I, do you think they'll allow that in World Because uh, they took out a lot of the consumables, like, our, like things like um, 
what is it, the rocks? You could get rocks when you go. You know the the like the Script Kingdom, uh, Script. Or whatever it's yeah, called. It's Chris, again. In there, you can buy rocks, and the rocks you just continually like knock people down. It's like the rocks you can use in dungeons almost. It's yeah, like yeah. CC in a very short timer. And people were literally like guilds were literally abusing it in World v. World, where now they disabled all of the consumable, like the purchasable um, weapons or tools, you, what do you, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. So, are they going to allow something like that into World v. World? That's, that's a big question. I, uh, I think they probably. I think they, they probably. They'll probably block it from PvP on World vs. World. Yeah. To be honest, because they've already pretty yeah. much. They already nerfed the Mesmer portals to not go through walls or something, didn't they? Because it was happening. World yeah, World they World. block out. They block out pretty much all consumables anyway. As Steve said yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. PVE but yeah, you're forgetting to awesome places in PVE. I mean, it might be interesting to see how it's used in dungeons. Because I know in COF. Path one, you can actually skip most of the dungeon just by jumping over the gates. So it'd be interesting to see maybe. Oh, I think it's a personal portal, isn't it? Oh, you see, I don't know. Yeah. I oh, But like, would everybody get one? You know, that would be like the new requirement for dungeons. Everybody's got to get one. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, I mean, you know, either the party has to have a mesmer or everybody's got to get. I mean, maybe it does open options, you know, since mesmers are something that's commonly used. Um, but who knows? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. Mm. Um, and speaking of dungeons, like, what do you guys think about the whole reward system now? Where basically you won't. So the way I understand is, there, there, like, you, you're, the way you're getting loot is going to kind of change, and then at the end you're going to get like those champ because they're talking about all these champion rewards. Where now when you do a champion, you're going to get a reward for it, which includes mats, skill yeah. points, weapon skins, and stuff like that. They're also going to bring that into the dungeon, and not only that, but each it, it, it now enables them because this is something they had to build. They had to build a system to do this, where they could set rewards on each individual ending boss. So, like COF Path One, you're going to get one gold. You do like Crucible Eternity or Ra, you're going to get like three gold. So yeah. you get more gold because you're going to spend more time doing the more difficult content. You know, what do you guys think about that? I. I think for a lot of people, it's going to piss them off, especially like COF farmers, because you're effectively removing a portion of the gold you get for farming the path continually, because you only get that reward once per day per path. So, well, they ba- they basically nerfed COF already, didn't they? Well, but recently, very recently. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. haven't been farming it. But, so, yeah. I think in that camp, it's probably going to annoy them, because you then have to solely rely on all the ectos you're getting from COF. Yeah, but for for me personally, I'm not that bothered about it because I I'm not a hardcore sort of dungeon farmer. So for me, like doing paths here and there and multiple paths of different ones every day, that it can it definitely boosts like the gold output I'll get. So I think they've kind of uh, boosted it for like more casual, but kind of at the same time nerfed it for the more hardcore people. That's kind of where I stand anyway. Yeah, I think for sort of like the, if like I mean like the so me from six months ago would have been really pissed off at that, but uh, now it's sort of like it's it's kind of like it's only really a, a hindrance if you're more of a hardcore farmer. Yeah. To be honest. And and the thing is, it's like it for me, it kind of got tiring of like every party they want warriors and a mesmer, and like what is that? I mean, what is that? I mean, that's you're basically like eliminating because you have to always think. I mean, it's unfortunate the way things work. We have to always think about what's better for the game. And when you're eliminating, you know, sixty percent of the classes, what are you actually doing for the game? You're not doing much. So I think some people, you know, there's always it's an MMO. So there's always gonna be people who are gonna have negative about anything. You could give them twenty gold for running COF, and somebody's gonna complain about it. You know. Yeah. But um, I think the fact of the matter is. It's still a very close amount, and it was still the same of like where COF, where it would COF, you could do like two runs. I think they said would be economically viable right now, currently, and yeah. so it's similar to that where it's scaling down. So I think it's just saying, hey, like if some people actually want to do something else, um, you have the opportunity now with other dungeons where you're going to get more. So I think it's more about giving more to other people than it is about taking it away yeah. um, from the COF. The hardcore farmers. Mm. I yeah, I agree with that. I suppose it's really just in keeping with the whole anti-farming philosophy that they've set out pretty much from the start, and not wanted it to be a grind. So, 
I can see definitely a lot of people moving away from COF and kind of branching out to farming other areas in addition to COF. So, yeah. Yeah, the whole champion thing, even that alone is like reason for people to actually go out into the world, you know? I mean, instances are great because you have your own content and you could do it and there's not a lot of interference. But for the feel of the game, you want the feel of the game where when you go out to the world, it's populated. So if yeah. you're giving rewards to not just dungeons, is what you're saying, you could do um, world content, then the world's going to feel more populated in energy. And like that was one of the important things that... Uh, Colin Johansson said it in, in one of the interviews he gave for magazine. Uh, I think it was Guild, Guild Wars 2 Hub. So shout outs to Guild Wars 2 Hub. They had like a two-part interview, which was, uh, which was really good. And one of the things he did say was, he said, don't just like, we're, like he didn't say it this way because he has to like PR it, but he was kind of saying like, don't just think about just COF or just dungeons. He's like, we want to make it so, and this is something that, has been, I guess, their, uh, I forgot what they call it, uh, pillars, they call them now, where it's like some, something hugely important about the game that they want to try to influence yeah. other people, the pillars. And he's basically saying, we want you to be able to say, hey, I want to do this today, I want to do that today, and be free to do that and get um, rewards that are comparable in value no matter what you do. So they're saying, if you want to hang out in Ore or South Sun and, you know, just start doing quest there and like get it up and start killing champs like you'll get similar value to that as you would instead of just you know mashing your head against a dungeon yeah. some people like grinding but at least yeah. saying you're going to get it by grinding or by doing whatever you want i think that's an interesting concept well, you were talking about them sort of like uh branching out with uh sort of like people kill different champions and having it being viable and uh labo said in chat that uh he or she i'm sorry uh will be looking for more champions to kill so I guess that's definitely what they go with, rather than just like the farm one specific thing and nothing else sort of deal. Yeah. I mean, it would be cool to hear things in zones instead of in just Lion's Arch. You know, yeah. with Lion's Arch, it's like need need warrior, need hyper DPS, link your link your armor. You know, yeah. And it's just going to be your you're floating around. And they'll be hey, you know, we're doing this. Anybody else want to help? And it's just, like you said, somebody said it's a champion risen shark or something like that. You know, like uh, I think you're probably talking. about the one in South Sun, maybe the champion Megalodon, but I'm not sure. But, um, you know, that's something when I went in there and I looked at it, it looks so cool, but there's nobody yeah, there because yeah. there's no reward for doing it. Like, yeah. you see this tremendous shark swimming around in South Sun, and you're like, oh my god, this thing is amazing. I want to, like, and you're like, hey, people, you want to do this? And, like, you know, maybe one person will, like, drive by and be like, oh, nobody here. And just you see, yeah, that's like a little drive by <laughs> questing. I they just kind of like, drive by questing. Nope. that's the official term, though. <laughs> Uh, oh, I was going to mention something that's gone. It'll come back in a minute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> should we should we move on? Sure. sure. Uh, um, okay. One. Th uh, so the account wallet for currencies is uh, an update I'm actually really looking forward to because my inventory at the moment has just got so many different dungeon tokens, and especially now with all the badges of honor you've got <clears throat> from the. Uh, Achievement oh, chests. I've got, got, I got to say something about that at some point. Uh, so yeah, it's just I'm just glad they've got it gone. What were you gonna? What were you gonna say? Well, it's just like I spent so long previously grinding my arse off to get badges of honor for this legendary that I still haven't got, and then I log in and I get like 500 medals of honor, and I'm just like, I don't know if I should be angry or sad. <laughs> what about happy? Is it angry, <laughs> sad, or happy? Oh okay, yeah, it was meant to be angry or happy, but my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, there's not really much to say on that. I just I think we're all in agreement that it's something that's decent and needed. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't played all that often in recent months, and it's a, even a problem for me in my bag kid in my inventory. So I'm glad they're adding it in. Mm. And, yeah, I, I mean, oh, you actually had to uh, pay. You know, it seems like you had to pay money for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> just so you could have room for all the different currencies. Mm. Um, okay, so the one thing I did want to look at is the sovereign weapons that are coming out. Um, the aetherized weapons, I actually wasn't a massive fan of, like, the look of them. Um, some of them were okay, but personally, really? I, will, I didn't really like them that much. So, 
for the sovereign weapons, I'm kind of hoping that there'll be something that'll wow me and kind of blow me away again, like the previous ones have. Um, I'm kind of yeah. Excited. I mean, go on. Sorry. How did you not like the hammer with the pistons going in and I, out I of mean, it? That's so cool. I'll, I'll give them like the. Axe. I guess I'm a car guy, but I, I I did quite like the axe with the thing that was like four different blades and like spinning around like that. But yeah, I don't know. They just didn't do it for me. I mean, the recent weapons with the uh, Zephyr Sang Club. You seen them? I forgot more than yes. yeah. there. I, I just I saw sort of my entire. I was so happy when I, I saw them. I was just like, I like that. Flint weapons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh like, god, it was so hot. <laughs> I don't know. Like, see, I like. I mean, I, I guess I'm into like that steampunk stuff. I guess. I mean, I guess it's a good thing. You like some, you don't like some. It shows that they're at least being diverse enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of thinking they'll probably look kind of quite regal, kind of like the human uh, cultural weapons do now, probably a bit more blingy and kind of royally and that stuff. I'm kind of thinking that's the style I'll yeah. go for. So that that does kind of excite me. So we'll have to see. Indeed. I don't know if they actually uh, data form that on Reddit. You know, like I was saying before, I know they they, they data form they data data. What a, <laughs> do you want? Go with it. <laughs> they they uh, farm, they mine that on um, on uh, on the the finishers, the new finishers that are coming out. Mm. Yeah. So they showed like the scarecrow and the snowman and all those other ones that are. I, th I think they mined a bunch of uh, a bunch of icons from the uh, Queen's Jubilee as well with masks mm -hmm. and stuff that look quite nice. I haven't seen any of the data mine stuff yet. <laughs> Such a bad host. Um, <laughs> so. As a data farm. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you guys want to mention about the uh, Queen's Jubilee patch? Because we've covered most of the major stuff. Yeah, I mean, as always, I'm just quite... Uh, I, I'm, I've completely forgotten the word, but I'm very excited for the uh, instances that generally cover these things. I'm just big on PvP, PvE and story, so I'm just mm. excited to see what happens with that as well. I mean, I think it's awesome. Like, a lot of people are saying, well, when's, when's the world going to change? Um... And I think the 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 crater, what's it called? Oh my god! Great collapse. The, the great collapse. Yeah. In Divinity's Reach, um, that was always like a spot that people were like been talking about for a long time. Yeah. And the fact that you know that tent showed up in there, I think that's really starting to see how because the one important thing, and I think everybody should really realize this, really realize, really realize, really a lot realize, of stuff, really realize, <laughs> uh, is that. We actually haven't gotten any of the living story that's on the current eight-week cadence. So everything we're doing isn't with this new four-team blitz that we've heard about. That's amazing. Yeah. And they said basically that the, uh, one of the things, again, in that same interview, you know, you always hear this one word when they're, when they're speaking about this, this word called iteration. And yeah. iteration is a word that travels across anything as far as um, making something – uh, even even if you do it by yourself, you know, like, let's say, for example, um, you want to paint a room, you know, if you just want to paint it, you're going to slap it up and not care. Right. But yeah. then if other people look at it, then, you know, because people, the more people that look at it, the more chance you have for people to see the imperfections. Mm. So, like, let's say you're painting, you know, your 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 dining room or, or you know, your den where your TV is or something. You want it to look really nice. So you're going to sit there and you're going to iterate on it. You're going to, you know, sit there and like use the proper stuff to like smooth out the walls and make sure there's no holes in the wall. Like I have one back there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's just, it's like, and I think what iterating is always speaking to is taking something and that's that word polish that we always hear hmm. when you don't have a chance to iterate. Sure. You can have great content and good stuff, but then you have a chance that, that guy whose name we can't remember, who was in South Sun, uh, excuse me, the boss battle, the guy who's the the Silvar. I know you mean. I know you mean. I know you mean. Yeah, well, nobody ever remembers exactly. Nobody knows his name. I he just know his fire. It, uh, it made me angry. because <laughs> that was something that obviously they they didn't have time to iterate on. They didn't say yeah. no. This isn't this isn't up to our standards, and we need to make this better. So now that they have this time, like the content is layered out, but they have eight weeks to iterate so now they have like you know a good two to three weeks to like instead of just saying hey this looks okay let's get it out there we can get something that's going to be really more developed yeah maybe every time won't be great but at least we're going to have like high 
I mean, it's just amazing that the current release we're on right now with the whole ship in the sky and these um, the aspects, which are all these great mechanics, this doesn't even have the iteration that they currently yeah. want to do. So could you imagine not even gone up you know, to not that, to, yeah. Yeah, not to like set our standards too high, but what now this is gonna look like when they do have the time to iterate more. I mean it's mm. I mean to me it seems like it can only get better. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's it's and quite I'm rather looking forward to it, if I'm honest. Mm. Because the earlier stuff wasn't that great for me, but now that they're having the time to iterate it or uh, iterate on it properly tells me that I should be excited. And kind of building on that, that, I think, didn't they mention with this patch that they're starting to now look into how they're tying together all the previous Living World stuff and kind of showing more of like how it all fits into each other rather than, because I know there have been a lot of complaints that people feel it's just like segmented and like you go from one month to the other and nothing follows on that much. Yeah, I get that. So they're starting to now build, build on that and I just, I'm just really looking forward to like the next few months. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. And Kanak, Kanak was his name. Kanak or Kanak. Oh, yeah. Kanak, yeah. So glory, yeah. yeah. Kanak. <laughs> Kanak. <laughs> and, and the great thing is, like potato, wooden potatoes. You know, one of the guys who's yeah. probably the lore spe specialist of um, yeah, of Guild Wars Two, Guild Wars One as well. Like the Guild Wars universe. God, he's um, so you guys Guild definitely Wars. like check out wooden potatoes. Follow him on Twitter, YouTube. If you like PVE and you like that stuff, he actually said in. Um, one of his videos, which was dealing with the um, dealing with the, the the latest content, that he actually had to eat his words because mm. just before he was talking about living story, he's like it was frustrating how it never had the it, it felt like you said it was instant stuff that it never carried. It didn't involve Guild Wars one things like that. Yeah, and just now, like. He's like, just with this latest thing in Glint, where we got all, like we talked about in our last episode a couple weeks ago, like two or three weeks ago, yeah. um, how now we have Glint being involved. And like what, what they are talking about and what he really thinks is he actually pulled up that in Guild Wars 1, there were eggs behind Glint yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the fight. And he was saying like now how this heritage and stuff and kind of what we were thinking too, like it could be either Pete pieces of glint or well, it could actually be baby glints yeah Papa, baby glinty glinties. juniors <laughs> <laughs> so and now like he's like he actually came out and said like i had to eat my words because and you could see like you know people we we judge really quickly you know we're saying this is what it's like right now and we oftentimes get nervous because we're used to typical development where things aren't going to change and there's not going to be a lot it just seems to me that marina Net is learning and getting better and now the fact that they're pulling stuff back from guild wars um uh, one and there's another thing i want to talk about with guild wars one later um with some of the stuff that colin johansson talked about but it seems like they're trying their best to 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 round everything out and like you say make it this story not just paragraphs or like uh, uh you know like a, a two a two page report for each event yeah um, something that has just been brought in the, up in the chat by Live Spartan is the confirmation that the champion loot will also drop in Wolfie World and by the legendary mobs. Uh, I was actually wondering about that before, but Ooh. I didn't ask. So, cheers for that one. Uh, we will link that in. Yeah, the Live Spartan. I've seen you around in uh, in Teldo's stream. So, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, hope everything's going okay. Uh, SPVP, <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> uh, right. So, uh, shall we move on to the next kind of topic we are looking at today, which is the last year of Guild Wars 2, and essentially the oh. next year of Guild Wars 2. I, uh, thought you, I thought you were saying that as the definitive last year, and that's the end of it. I was like, what's, what's like this? What's going on? <laughs> uh, so, uh, the first ever episode we did of this podcast was where we talked about our impressions from uh, the first Beta Weekend event. And since then, there's been quite a lot that's changed. Uh, I personally feel now that we're at the point where Guild Wars 2 should have been at closer to launch, because I've said this like time and time again, I definitely think they launched too early, personally. Other people yeah. disagree, but that's what I always think. Um, so the biggest change that's happened to PvP, arguably, is, of course, the living world, with the regular updates now that we get every two weeks. And 
Uh, the way I see it, this, this basically forms a major part of Guild Wars 2's end game because when it first came out, there were a lot of people, like my friends included, that were like, I'm leaving because Guild I've got to 80, what do I do now? There's essentially not a lot for me to do. Uh, so uh, the other parts being the end game now being, of course, dungeons, difficult encounters, and with like the champion loot drops and all that changing now as well, that's you know increasing the amount you have to do there. Um, guilds and guild missions, being a part of a guild, I think, is not so much vital to having fun in Guild Wars 2, but definitely goes a long way to helping. Uh, because yeah. you know, being surrounded by that group and the community and doing the guild missions, I think, is a big part of the end game. Uh, mm -hmm. Leveling alts and like the general exploration, another part of the end game, and then of course you have the world of the world and SPVP. But I think before this living world, uh, definitely people complained, but now it's kind of not so much a traditional end game as other MMOs, but it's definitely st it's definitely there now, and I for one am definitely grateful for it. So yeah, that's kind of my two cents on the whole living world, and you know since launch, uh, you guys. Yeah, your name. Well, I'm glad it's, it's finally. <laughs> I'm glad it's finally uh, coming in because, as you said, a lot of it is stuff that's uh, like they, they've brought in a lot of really cool stuff that I would have expect. But again, some of the stuff they bring out is stuff like, oh, that's just should have already been there. But it's just it's nice to see them getting to that point now, even though uh, even if it's been a long time coming. Hmm. I, de I, de I mean, I definitely agree with you almost a hundred percent. You know, because again, the issue is like when you look at the past of MMOs, MMOs were made for you to obsess over to treat it as it's a job yeah to, to to they wanted you on there only playing this game like when you used to play an mmo back in the day you didn't play multiple mmos yeah not, well i'm not there's always exceptions to the rule but yeah. it seemed like to me like you were focused on one mmo at a time and you had to be on every day to do certain things to stay with your your friends or try to because it never worked i mean Every time you get into MMO, it's always like you and like three or four friends, and you guys want to like level together, and like we're gonna have so much fun leveling together, and yada yada yada. And then like you go, you go, to, you go to use the bathroom. You come back, your friends five levels above you already, and you <laughs> went for a wee. You know what I mean? Like he's already five levels above you. You're like, yo, dude, wait up, and he's like, nah, dude, I got, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm out, I gotta go. You know? And like that was it's amazing. like you, it's ago. it's like unless you literally like quit your life, you had like. Just like a, a, a catheter hooked up, so you didn't have to go to the Wii, <laughs> yeah. and like 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 only like had Dr Pepper and like Doritos, like had you the, know, had them piped in the pipe in automatically at intervals. <laughs> yeah, like the bank, like the thing you throw in the bank when you go through the drive through the yeah. bank, it like sucks it up and like it like literally like a, like a a Dorito packet would like hit you in the side of the head, reminding you to eat. <laughs> and like this is how you had to live your life as an MMO, you know. I guess it was cool, but I don't know. It's like I think there are certain people, like you know, your friends, where they that's just what they want to do. They want a game they can obsess over, and that yeah. uh, they feel they have to play every day. Like you have to play this game every day. It's like maybe they don't have jobs and they want jobs this way that are so it's like a fun job. I mean, I don't know. Or like you know, you guys are still in school. You have the whole summer, so like you like it, you could like it, it, it's you know. It could be something where, where you could spend that much time on. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, hopefully, like, for those people, I think those MMOs are great. But I think the way Guild Wars 2 is going at is they're going to get, they're, with these living content, these achievements, all stuff, they're giving you stuff to do every day. But they're not going to give you that, like, you have to go to this dungeon, you have to complete this dungeon with your friends. And then once you get that dungeon complete and do all the gear and stuff, then you can go into the next level. And then you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again. And I think it's just, it's like we're evolving. Like we're just evolving from doing this repetitive content, which we're used to, and I guess it's in our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So like, we don't. They don't tell us what to do. They'll suggest us what to do. They don't, yeah. they don't have to do this content. Yeah. So just they kind of let you go and say, you know, be your own individual and choose your your content and what you like. And, and I guess that, that scares some people, or they're just not used to it yet. I yeah. When my friends like were about to leave, I was I was basically said to them, "You're trying to make Guild Wars Two wow, and it's never going to be that." Yeah. And that's that's like yeah. the sole reason why they didn't enjoy it because I uh, I wouldn't say they were close minded about it, but they didn't kind of embrace how Guild Wars Two was different and how you kind of 
have to adapt how you look at MMOs. It's not a massive grind fest for all the gear because he literally he got to level 80 before me because he just grinded his way up and up and up. And he said he turned around and said to me one day, "Okay, I've got full exotic gear. Ascended wasn't out then." He said, "What do I do now?" And I was like just play and he, he he didn't have any idea of the concept of literally just playing yeah so and that for me that was that was kind of weird but for him it was just you know he left to go and play a while ago well my guild leader left for that very reason so i i, I know where uh, people like that come from but uh yeah guild wars 2 is not that game and it never will be and i'm glad it's not i mean they can cater to that audience but for me it's it, that's not the game i'd, I'd like to play mm. so i'm i'm a, Okay, with that. I'd say yeah, yeah, like Indel is saying, like it's it's like fractals of the mist is kind of for uh, those yeah. kind of people. Like yeah. they, I did they put fractals in to cater to those. Fractals yeah. was probably my most sort of active time on the game. I was on that every night with my guild, and we got to yeah. we just on it every night, and we spent hours trying to beat things. It was great. Mm -hmm. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. I'm farming for that fractals back piece at the moment, but I can't be asked. <laughs> Dude, I still. I still haven't done fractals yet. Like on my thief, I'm like level seven, and my ng, I don't, I'm still level one. It's just, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't got, got into it yet. And some of the content looks really cool, but I don't oh, know. I just it's a lot of fun. Yeah, just there was nothing. There was nothing in my experience with God Wars Two that really beat that gameplay experience because like we we tried to do level ten fractals before we had ascended gear. We couldn't do it, and we spent hours trying to get through it. And there was nothing that really beat that experience for me. Yeah, I think. What's great though is the fact that you don't have to do like fractals to have the best gear or whatever. So I I like that whole concept. So I mean, with you not having done fractals, but you're still like I know you've got for some things like your shields a lot cooler than like any shield I'd have because of that uh, <laughs> super venture box one. But I, I, I like that. Uh, so. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, and we're kind of going to jump on this bandwagon for a minute because everyone's kind of been talking about it at the moment, is living world versus permanent content in the game. Because there's, there's kind of like a split between people who would rather see much more permanent content being delivered and the people who are just happy with what's happening now. You know, we get some permanent content, we get some temporary stuff. Uh, personally, um, I'm very much of the opinion that Living World is one of the best things to happen to Guild Wars 2 in terms of PvE. Because, obviously, like we've explained with it being a major part of the end game and being for you know, casual and non-casual players to you know, just take a break and play some cool stuff for a bit. And, but the way that they're sliding in permanent content as it's ready is kind of catering to both things. I wouldn't personally want them to stop living world and focus solely on pushing out the permanent content that was promised mm. at launch and has you know things like the looking for group tool is i'm sure you know nearing like completion now but i wouldn't want to sacrifice living world to have it like a month earlier or something like that so yeah that's kind of my opinion what uh, what uh, do you guys think i'm about? still on both sides defense on that point and i'm gonna remain so until we start getting into these periods where where uh, developer groups have had the full eight weeks but i am f honestly i'm fine with either providing i get my guild wars law because um, <laughs> i've talked about that before we've got that in yeah. a zephyr so with the with the zephyr and stuff like that and as one mateo said he, he he ate his words on that topic but i want to see because like i got hooked on guild wars for the law i'm not a hardcore go do everything farm every night sort of person I'm in it for the law because I love it, and I feel like Guild Wars Two has lacked a bit of that law, especially sort of before the Zephyr Sanctum and stuff came out. So if they can, if they can, whatever platform they do, if they can have that law coming for me, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. I think, mm -hmm. I think permanent content is important, and obviously, we're going to see a change with um, Divinity's Reach with the tent going up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is that going to be permanent content or uh not? I hope so. If they knock that's, down that arena or whatever it is, I'm going to be pretty sad. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's exactly that's something we don't know right now. Mm. One of the things that is sort of kind of permanent content is now that they're announcing that the, all the mini games that they're going to actually have a rotation. Mm. Yeah, and one of the cool things about it is, from what I hear, that the a daily is going to have an, a, a mini game in it. So basically, you're guaranteed to have population. Maybe it won't be like the one you want every week, but at least 
when it comes up and it's a daily, you're going to have people to play against. Um, so I think yeah. that's, yeah, I mean, I think stuff like that is really cool. You know, that they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, maybe not the permanent content we want. Um, or the, the permanent the, content we need. The, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, definitely. Permanent yeah. Um, all right, so. Uh, Back to you, Rowan. So, um, <laughs> we've kind of talked about what's happened now and what's happened in the, um, like, since launch. Uh, looking to the future, what would you guys most like to see apart from law, Jason? Oh, well, I can't <laughs> say anything now, right? Go on. <laughs> Is there anything um, that you're Super lost? Adventure Box. Yes, that, I do want yeah. to see that return. I want more SAB. <laughs> it's definitely coming back. Yeah. Like, just a matter definitely. of whether it's going to be They, they had, later. like, in the whole future built be a two, um, yeah. thing that Johansson did. He had, there was a big picture of, like, what's coming next. And there's a big picture of Super Adventure Box. Yeah. Like, yeah, it kind of sounds like we're going to... Yeah. I mean, you know, speaking of that, like, what, you know, maybe we could talk about what they're planning to deliver so far. Because... They already said they're focusing on permanent content. Um, world boss changes. They want to make changes to the world bosses to make them. So one thing that's important that this is showing is that they're not forgetting about current content. This is something we talked about that's great about Guild Wars 2 in our last one, is that any level can do all the con content. Yeah. So every content is viable, which means improving content is viable for them to make the game more developed. Where you're not going to have these ghost towns like other MMOs where they make something and it's like, eh, and then it's already people are gated out of it, so to speak. And so there's no reason for them to fix it because yeah. it's not be something that everybody can part participate in, mm. which is something great. Um, dungeons and Fractals. They said that uh, some of the dungeons, they might even think about completely redoing. Like, yeah, they talked about Ara. They said um, Please, with Ara, yeah, Ara, that that was kind of like something that they, you know, speaking to what Rowan said about the game not being done. Yeah. So they had their their um, what is that called? Whatever it's called, where they have to meet a certain thing by a certain time. I what line. No, it's it's something else. They have you oh, know okay. they have a professional you know like calling a janitor or a custodial engineer. There's some like oh, okay. uh, of what it is. Um, but uh, um, so they had that where they're saying like we're gonna. It sounds like maybe they're probably gonna redo a raw. They want the so. um, the boss fight of. Um, Zaitan to be memorable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that's really um, exciting about that, you know? And uh, and also what they're talking about of what they're doing in the future is how the game is going to progress. Um, and this is something that is really interesting because other games has always been the gear grind. What made Guild Wars 1 special for a lot of people is all of the skills and utilities and traits or the abilities that you should be able to have in Guild Wars 1. Mm. And from what they're saying, like that's going to be their progression system. You're, like they're just going to like like Guild Wars One, you know, maybe not to the same extent, but they're going to have like a lot of skills and abilities adding to Guild Wars One, and that's how you're going to progress. You're going to have to earn more skill points to unlock the new abilities, maybe or or whatever they decide the mechanic to be. And this is something that you can instead of like something like normal games where it's gear, you have to go to this dungeon and do it here. Like this is something that they're they're saying like. You could gain um, the resources to unlock these new abilities anywhere, and that's going to be your progression of how to like continue on to the game. Hmm. Which I mean, I, I don't know if like any like you guys who played Guild Wars One, if that sounds like a good option. I well, yeah, because Guild Wars One was very much, from my experience, was very much focused around various builds and that. Because Guild Wars One, the yeah. end game for me was essentially underworld and foul farming. And one of the saddest days of my life was when they nerfed 600 Smite. So um, <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely be up for having sort of more build variety and more skills and that in Guild Wars 2 and seeing how it would affect sort of how everyone plays. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's sort of like coming coming into that point from someone on like the other side of the fence because like Guild Wars 1 was basically, you know, I was terrible at builds and anything like that. I've just left the story. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt, felt like sort of the, the, it was sort of the amount of stuff they had was a little bit overwhelming and sort of inapproachable, unapproachable for noobs like me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I get like that was like, that was also like for some, for a lot of people like you, a reason why they played the game. So yeah. it's just a lot of. Yeah. I mean, the way I always look at that is like if they eventually do templates, and this is something that I would like to speak to a, hopefully a dev about, 
Um, if they can make it where, and, and again, this is something that's just going to require time, like, you could build templates. So you'll have your characters. Like, and let's say for something when we're doing, you know, for doing uh, PvP, um, like how they have picks and bans in, um, in uh, uh, what you would call it. If, like they have picks and bans in League of Legends, something that might make it, uh, make it more interesting is like you have to submit your builds and then your builds go through a pick and ban phase maybe or something like that where they could – or maybe not a ban phase because I don't think the meta is good enough to do but a pick phase where you literally have all your builds and then you pick which one you want to use. And you could also tie this into PvE where you have, have all your builds – and you just pick the one like, okay, we're doing this dungeon. I know in this dungeon I need more CC or I need more knockbacks or I need to be more tanky. You pick your little tanky build. Then you could label it and do that. And then in turn, tie that into where looking up builds, where you can actually like have a little window in the game where you can look up builds for your character. And you could like search and say, oh, I want this type of build. And there's little check marks you check in your build and this is the type of build it is. And then you can see different builds that people make in the game. That you could be used. Yeah, um, I, I mean, love that. maybe that would make it more accessible. It, that did make it accessible for me in Gold as well because I had my friend basically tell me everything I needed to get, and I just went off and got it in the end. So the template system, if they if they're gonna go that route, the template system would be for for a player like me something that need to add in. Mm. It was great though that system. Yeah. Um, I've got, I've lost what I was gonna say again. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, while I think too much it, on your mind. Yeah, while I think of it, has anyone else got anything uh, to mention about this whole? I topic? I'm fine on that subject. Uh, um. Okay. They basically they said more rewards, the new mats, the new crafting system, which is kind of old. One thing that's interesting about that, I just wanted to touch on quickly, yeah. um, is with the crafting system, um, it's going to be time gated. So you're going to get like when you do champs, you're going to get crafting that way, from what it sounds like. But then you have to like kind of like Mystic Forge lower tier mats to make this other upper, I guess another like 6th level or 7th level mat, whatever you want, or 8th level mat, whatever you want to call it, yeah. the highest level of mat, and that's going to be time gated. And that was something we were talking about before the episode where we said, you know, time gating stuff, for some people they feel that stinks, but hear me out on this one. So if you're a mat, a mat form, you're getting all these mats, right? This, this gives you multiple opportunities. You're going to do your daily and combine it together. With all the extra mats you have, you can now turn around and flip that on the trading post. So you can yeah. still make money, farm your money that way because you're being invested in doing things. But at the same time, we're not going to have like those day one legendary armor people. They're going to have yeah. to you know, do the dailies and build it up and then eventually be able to get that stuff, which I think is good because – for somebody who doesn't play a lot, they're not going to make the money like the farmer would because the farmer is going to sell all that stuff on the thing. But they'll have enough to like make their mats maybe once a, you know once every couple days, but you know maybe once a day they can squeeze it in and do it. They'll have enough time, and that'll give somebody who isn't like invested all the time the ability to like log, log on, stay on for an hour, and then build their stuff, and then they could log off, and they feel like they're going to be a part, and they could be a part of that you know the legendary crowd yeah. that is so cool. But a lot of people. People can't get to right now because yeah. of the tremendous amount of dedication yeah. it takes to to build a legendary. I mean, even me, like, I play fairly regularly, and I've just never bothered to go for a legendary because I part of me can't be asked farming it for it all, but another part is just kind of questioned whether or not I'd even actually get there. Like, I know in my life, well, I'd get to like a few mats away and then be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I, was, I don't like this one anymore. <laughs> I think with me, it's like I'm most I'm most motivated to go for something grindy when all of my sort of guildies or friends are doing the same thing alongside me. Like a couple of months ago, everyone wanted a legendary, and those sort of people have tailed off. They play the game for the living story updates, and, but they don't really do any of that farming. So I think like when people like that start dropping off, I just drop off as well. So I've I've still got all my legendary stuff and i'm fairly sure that one day i'll get back into the swing of it and just go for it especially now that i'm not stressing about medals of honor is that one <laughs> yes. it's not called badges of yeah. honor i yeah, keep no, no. getting that mixed up <laughs> um what well, what's definitely gonna make it easier is how they're sorting out the precursors as well for legendaries so just yeah stick that in there while i remember it <laughs> before i forget it again um <laughs> okay uh Anything else to mention as we're kind of looking back and looking forward and jumping all over the place? 
uh, because I've pretty much exhausted all my notes for today. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have a look at mine. I mean, are, are we moving to like the way out in front of like what it's eventually going to be type of well, uh, we can if you thing want. now with that? Oh, okay. What do you do? You have any thoughts on way, way in the future? Then? Uh, way in the future. Uh, um, the one thing that always I think about is systems. Like all the systems that they had in Guild Wars One, like that Jason was talking about, like the template system. You know, we have like Yolo queue coming out, so people are <laughs> gonna be able to, to to queue up now by themselves. And what I always think about is, okay, we have like this. There's 250 people, from what we know, developing Guild Wars Two right now. Yeah, and that's the same amount of people that were there before the game. You know, you always hear from a lot of other MMOs, and I think the one I heard of that was different was Rift. I remember like when Warhammer came out, like, 50 or 75% of the team was just dropped. Like, that's it. You're out. And then they were shipped off to, like, wherever, and, they, and, then, and that was it, you know? Mm. But Rift was the first one I heard of where, like, they didn't drop anybody when the, like, I, I may be wrong, but this is, like, the one that always comes to mind, and where they didn't drop anybody. And then Rift had this tremendous, like, release cycle of releasing content and, and, and like, really um, made that game successful, for a good amount of time, when a lot of MMOs haven't survived that period of time, when the, the real burst of like MMOs came out, like one, one of them that's still going well is is uh, that hasn't been established is Rift. So you know, like that Arena Net has that same thing of like they didn't, as far as I know, add or drop too many people um, yeah. hmm. when the game launched. So there, these people are actually working. So when I think of things, you know, what are all the UI guys doing? What are the system developers doing? What are the what are the design people doing? Like I always think, like in the future, it's going to be a lot of different systems that are going to come out. Hmm. They, they, also, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's just though, no, because it's just like obviously they have the living story teams, but not everyone's in those teams. So it's just interesting to, to think about what all the other people, as you said, are building alongside that. And I think we're going to see some of it start servicing. I mean. Definitely. If you'd asked us 12 months ago, I don't think any of us would have been able to even predict like what it's like now. So, I mean, yeah. another yeah. year, I won't see it. Gonna be like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I didn't think about the wallet thing, you know? I mean, and that seems so logical right now. Like, who yeah. would have thought about the wallet? And the fact that, like, the whole achievement system was revamped. Yeah. So it shows you that, like, like, these people can do really great things. Like, I think the achievement system is, you know, I mean, I... I very rarely remember in games where a major part of the game is so revamped like that. You know, like yeah. you know, you always think like the achievement. Like usually, that's something that doesn't really change that much. And I guess they did that because now the living story and achievements are so tightly intertwined that now they have this great. I mean, the achievement system is oh, just great. I love it, and it, like it's just so much easier to read now. It's yeah, it's such a breath of fresh air. So like, what are they gonna do next? Like you know. What I don't know what what are they gonna do next? Like, well, number one, raids. We have we. I mean, like the chat's been talking about it. We obviously haven't been reading chat because chat's been going. Well, well maybe we, we have, haven't read chat because they didn't see it. I read. I I'm kidding, it. guys. I read you guys. We love you. But the raids, like what? <laughs> well, what what's gonna go on with the raids? I mean, you know, I mean, I, I think if they have this raid content and they don't have a looking for. For group, like you can't do that. Like people have been a asking for looking for group for so long. Like if you're gonna have raids, like and you're not gonna have looking for group, no way. Like no way. It has to be there. You know? Yeah. 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 Maybe they're doing that first. Maybe they're developing them alongside each other. We don't know. That might. So they like tie it in together when yeah. they release it. It's like yeah. the, the, I mean, because that like right there, that's kind of like an expansion. That's yeah. something that's. To get a lot of people excited, a lot of people are going to want to come back to the game. Okay, imagine this. Imagine I'm just I'm just kind of theorizing. The expansion kind of release thing. We're going to have raids. We're going to have the looking for group tool. We're going to have your home instance and your guild hall. That right there, that's an expansion's worth of content. Yeah. Maybe, maybe an adding an extra zone in there for the you know the exploration and the puzzle stuff. But those four things right there, those four things. That for me, like that would be like. Like, oh, they're saying it's data mined. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good eye, guys. See, that's yeah, the, this is why we need it. the live stream yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we're getting information real time, like the stock ticker <laughs> on the bottom. We, we know what it's worth right now. 
now. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like that that stuff right there, like that's something I'm seeing, like you know, this yearish. Maybe, maybe. I'm just saying, one year anniversary, raids, guild halls, maybe. home instance. Maybe. Looking uh, for group. I would love all. I, it's gonna. I don't. I think. I feel like all of that's gonna show up eventually. But I think, as much as I want it to be. <laughs> have all of that come for a one year anniversary I don't think it's going to happen quite yet but we've definitely got the looking for a group tool and stuff like that mm. on its way okay. and they're definitely developing that kind of stuff even if it's not ready to go now they're definitely on it they have to be or at least thinking about it yeah that's true yeah because they said it that was all part of the looking forward yeah, thing. yeah. so totally they're definitely they're, they're definitely on it mm. well, that's good so what about you what do you guys got like for the future uh, in the year 2000 <laughs> I... just break out the song right now <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really not a good at imagining things. So the only thing I I always keep saying this is I just want more personal story kind of thing. I just want to yeah, see or just where it leads. law story. Sorry, <laughs> but is personal story going to come back, or is that something that that's done? Like, is well, it going to be is living world the new personal? story? I forgot on why they talked about it, but they did say they were they wanted the personal story was still a part of the game. I forgot on where, but I read it recently, and if it's not, I'll be a bit upset. Because I love the living world, but I also want my personal story. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. that's true. Yeah. And it seems like probably with the personal story, the cinematics aren't going to be this same. Like, go to the cut scene with the two people that <laughs> like to each other. It's just going to be because I mean the game looks good enough as it is. I mean I guess they did that for the the, the cinematic, but I yeah. think the game like you know the reason why that style of presentation was invented in older games was because the graphics weren't good enough to convey that. So the fact that like you can be in the game and I think it's more cinematic where like you see how like they're panning the camera around people when people talk. Mm -hmm. You see like they're starting to mess with that whole movie style feel of it like where they're having like 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 a director like okay we're going to like you know the Vista team we're going to use yeah. the Vista team to make it where like we can rotate yeah, the camera around. I like that. I like that. Using those skills. I to, mean like, rotate the camera around. Sometimes sometimes they show up worse than Guild Wars 1 cinematics but some Type that just great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I mean, like, like, when you see like Ritlock sat there going, <laughs> a little bit off, but, but yeah. Like the first time I went to Ascalon Catacombs, oh, that like, was... and I saw the cinematic in the beginning. I was like, no, I like that stuff. Some kind of yeah, cheesy. I love that. Most of my friends were just like, skip to the end. Yeah, and I was like, no, I do not skip. <laughs> <laughs> I still get like, like we're, we're doing COF runs, so like you know, my friends have like they have the warrior, and they have, you know, they're trying to run through it and like they'd be like all right who's why isn't the boss starting the, whatever the yeah the aspect whatever that thing is yeah. at the end the cage looking weirdo monster well that's kind of weird. <laughs> whatever so they're like why isn't this starting it and they're like steve i steve, think <laughs> are you in the freaking movie again i'm like i'm just watching it i like it I i've been trying to uh persuade my guild to sort of go on and all all like all path or do all the paths of a raw but watch the cinematics because i want to know what happens because yeah. sure i've read up like law stuff does happen in there but mm. i can't access it because <laughs> I, can't, I can't go in with a pug and I, <laughs> oh god no <laughs> same thing with crucible like, and then crucible, i just i like, haven't done like I, I haven't even done the story version of that because I, I, when I when this game came out, I raced to level 80 within three days. Worst mistake of my life. Never do it. But uh, Crucible Eternity at that point was an unplayable, sort of just impossible chunk of content, and I just skipped over it. You know which one is good to go back to, which is pretty good? Honor of the Waves. I like Honor of the Waves. That one was pretty I, cool. I, I did that, that one. Yeah. I've I'm just I whenever I think of Good Wars Two Dungeons, I think of that one scene where where Logan catches Ritlock when he falls off the cliff, but it's just like no, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> He's like, I got <laughs> uh, my web. I'm uh, sorry. Apparently, my webcam's frozen on the stream. Oh, no, I'll just restart. Now, it's all right. Okay. Yeah, it's it all right. does it occasionally. I'm sorry. It's always sexy. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we're just the cinematics. We're, we're, that's the pose. <laughs> there we go thanks in the year 2000 is there anything else that any uh, how about you guys in chat what do you like what do you guys think what's you know it's obviously there's gonna be a little delay here yeah so yeah. how about we pose the question to you guys and we'll come we can come back or see how fast you guys we'll, respond we'll dancing to elevate him quiet time yeah. everyone <laughs> like, just, just here, like this waiting <laughs> come on 
<laughs> yep. okay. But anyway, uh, well, so uh, like, what do you like when you guys look into the year two thousand? You look into the future of Guild Wars two. Like, what? Is there anything like way out there that you could see? You know, how, I mean, there are there are visions going on right now. <laughs> dancing, like yeah, and it's just like I see something in the flames. <laughs> <laughs> First person. We have a, we have a uh, we have. A oh, I feel like I feel like that's something no. they don't even have to try to do. I feel like they could just flick a switch and put that in the game. They just don't want to. Less undead. Less yeah. Less, <laughs> less 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 um. Crystal uh, desert. Less. Ooh. Crystal, Crystal desert. desert. Put yeah. that out there. Want it now? Yeah, but what's fighting with elder dragons versus lava? Joe. Oh, oh did you, do you know Power Joko? He's from Guild Wars 1. No, who is that? He's, he's, a, he's an undead monster. Do you want the round <laughs> one minute what happened law thing that's probably incorrect? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> Give it a try. Well, basically, what's happened now, like, in Guild Wars 2 now, uh, Elona is basically cut off because Power Joko has just butt raped the whole thing. And uh, he basically. He basically <laughs> Precisely. He's, he's basically this undead. <laughs> thing that just controls basically everything the sun spears who do you know about the sun spears oh for you giving me flashbacks from that well the, sun basically like sun spears are pretty much wiped out and so i think to go to alona oh. would you would you rather go to alona and face him or carry on with elder dragons what would uh, I want him to get involved. I want him to show up. Yeah, me and Crown Katoric are buddies now. We're going to have a big fight with you. It's going to be great. <laughs> no, because I just have like an image of like I was walking into the Crystal Desert and Crown Katoric and Power Joker are just like sat on stools having a cup of tea. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're together now. I'm picturing, I'm, I mean, for me, I'm picturing Crown Katoric erupting out of the sands. That's kind of the oh, thing. Oh, imagine like, that. If, w would be cool to me like what I'm thinking of is like you walk over to an area he erupts out of the sands and that like drops you down into a cavern uh, which oh. is like all crystals everywhere and you like fight him in there oh could you imagine it's, like, like you're fighting him in his <laughs> well this be a great way to word that you like the you, your group walk out into the desert and you're like there's nothing here and and then suddenly he yeah. shoots out and just kills you. And <laughs> 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 just blood splatters Gigi? across the continent of Tyrion. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's oh, a great um, Jasper. Yeah, the, uh, Jasper he's Ryan. About the he Utopia up... concept. Of. Yeah, the, the yeah, modern yeah. city. Yeah, that the, was for uh, uh... The Final Fantasy Wars Two. Yeah, that was for like an expansion that they were gonna do called Utopia, which they then sort of scrapped and they moved on to Guild Wars Two instead. Well, they kind of adapted it parts of it into either North. Yeah, they they added parts of it into Guild Wars Two. Yeah, but they they wanted to do stuff that's in Guild Wars Two that they couldn't do, so they went up. Blackjack with hookers. Wow. I never <laughs> imagine like what kind of what kind of oh, you could be women of the night would these be? <laughs> they gotta be Oh Fresh is great. Great woman. <laughs> um okay, have we got anything else to say before we wrap it up? Uh Wiki. Um I've I've got no more pointers for this week, I don't think. Didn't Steve, do you have something you want to say about wooden potatoes? Like you wanted to say earlier, but you didn't, or have you said it? And that's a great question. <laughs> um, okay, okay, wooden potatoes. What are, what are we talking about potatoes? Tweet. He was right. talking about. Um, oh my goodness! It fluttered. It, it was a butterfly. That's, oh. that's fine. That's. I know. We'll do. We'll do it next week. <laughs> So the the one thing oh the one thing I did find interesting what he said yeah. was when you met Glint you actually Glint was in a piece of sand yeah. in the Crystal Desert yeah that to me was I love that stuff it's like chill. that's that whole, whole like you know what I read that there's a universe the in every atom and like every solar system is a, an atom or something you know, like that whole like I don't know if anybody else knows what I'm talking about no I'm, yeah. I'm just nodding with oh, you guys. I know you, I know. sure. Yeah, I know. You're like, great, just keep uh, going. Yeah, I know, I know this. <laughs> like the scalable world. Like our, our world is like in the body of somebody else. And like that oh, person yeah. is in the, another solar, you know, in another universe. And like it scales up and down. Like that, like I love that stuff. So that whole idea, like to me, that was pretty amazing when we started talking about that today. 
mm. which was really cool. I, I mean, I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was great reading that in the books, if you ever read the books. Uh, Edge of Destiny, where, like, Glint was in the sand. It was yeah. great, great drawing. Glint in pink, killing Inasora by giving him a lap dance. <laughs> No, no, that's, that's now, now we're moving on to inappropriate <laughs> fan art. And then we're going into the realm yeah. of the RP. Yeah. Uh, deviant art or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, see. yeah. Somebody wants to get the, the Kuzik, the Kuzix, Kuzix and the Luxons? Kuzix. Yeah. Kuzix Do you know who they are? I have absolutely they no idea. They Catherine. were f like two warring factions in Guild Wars 1. Although now in Guild Wars 2, they've basically been wiped. Everything's been wiped out, all these well, yeah. <laughs> in so. Well, they're all, to do, they're all in Canter, though, aren't they? So well, yeah. maybe, maybe there's some remnants. We never know. Uh, I just got something. Speak of warring factions, because I know it's really late for you guys, but it's our first episode. God. What about the idea of two NPC major factions are fighting each other, and we're kind of like stuck in the middle of it? Like where there's this war going on between these two. Like you walk around. Well, yeah, like, that was like that was Guild Wars One. That, well, there was yeah, it like, was essentially that was what the cousin that looked into. And you basically had to because like they were kind of like, I mean, they would. I hate comparing it to Wild but it was like the Horde, uh, the Alliance in a sense, sort of maybe. Because it was just like two groups fighting against each other, and the play got to sort of choose sides from it. Yeah. So it's kind of already not. I mean, it might. Okay, yeah, Kurzix and Luxons were defeated by the Canton Emperor. That's what I said. Sorry, <laughs> Rohan. Uh, oh, just listen, man. I want to RP, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I think that's probably a good time to end the show then, unless anyone else has got yep. anything to contribute. Nope. Oh, yeah, I definitely got... No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, that's a heart attack. Bro. So... <laughs> Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat who's joined us on our first ever live episode. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, do let us, you know, do give us feedback and whatnot, what we can improve, what you liked, and uh, hopefully you can join us next week, Friday, uh, 5 p.m. PDT. Uh, that's 1 a.m. the Saturday morning BST. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, there are a number of ways. Uh, podcast at girlmark.com is an email address for all the comments and whatnot. Uh, you can also use the comment system on our YouTube channel or the guildmag.com website uh, if you're watching the recorded version of this. Uh, you can also tweet us. All our Twitter accounts will be in the show notes. And uh, mm -hmm. hopefully we will see you next week. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to tune in if you can. And uh, see you then. So, bye, everyone. Thank you. One thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Bye. I want to give a shout-out. We should get. We definitely have to give a shout-out to uh, SAO, uh, SOAC uh, for giving us this giving the live stream definitely. so shout software. out to them yeah. don't forget that uh saoc um s s o a c oac i apology, so apologize they have, have um shows about every profession that yeah. are aired on this channel so if you want to learn about your profession make sure to visit those um of course want to give a shout out to uh you know to mark and everybody over at guru um because they you know and especially rowan rowan um does a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody knows about like basically jason and i we, we kind of sit here and try to entertain and <laughs> expend our best knowledge but not for anything rowan does a lot of the work and uh you know, that's something that i know jason and i definitely appreciate Indeed. um you know so that's that's really cool and uh definitely of course uh to you guys for coming down um if you guys do have any ideas, like I think we'll, we'll try and ho host stuff more where we can have more of your guys' input. Yeah, um, definitely. Although some of the stuff with the little risque stuff is pretty funny, you know, try not to get too, too you know, there's a fine line, so try not to cross that too much. But uh, really happy to see some of the guys that I see over in structured PvP, um, you know, uh, come over and, and watch the stream. I appreciate it, uh, and it's good seeing you guys around here. And uh, thanks for showing up. I just, yeah. just wanted to say try to you know cover because we we don't think about it rowan didn't think about because you have no idea what he what he had to do to get this work and so i, I just want to chime in and say thanks <laughs> all right well oh and don't forget like just another side oh, yeah. note uh jason has his own youtube channel he does Thank so you, Steve. don't forget to check out i do if you want to see my face or my voice or any of those two things then go and check it out the link will be in the show notes as always uh, so yeah thank you everyone here for joining us we will see you next week bye bye goodbye bye guys
Euch so auf, ne? <lacht>